Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in a residential road in the Oxfordshire village of Nettlebed. It may look like just a normal residential road, but there's something rather unusual in the middle of it. There's a brick kiln, an old brick kiln. This village up here at Nettlebed was where there was a brickworks. In today's video, we're going to have a little look at some of Nettlebed, but we're also going to go down to find the lost village of Bix. But I thought we'd start here with this brick kiln because it's quite unusual, you know, houses, brick kiln. Now, there's actually a railway line from here, ran off in that direction, quarter of a mile or so, up to the clay pits. So I didn't intend this to be a walk about old railways, but I've just discovered that there was an old railway. Let's just have a little look at the kiln. We can't go in, we have a look, see through the door. Well, you can't really see much, but yep. So that's the kiln. Nettlebed is a village on the road from Henley up towards uh, Oxford and Wallingford and um, its main industry here was the brick making. The bricks would have been used for buildings such as um, Watlington Town Hall which I know is on a different road and also um, later Stoner House, a stately home which I'd really like to visit and I believe going back a lot earlier Wallingford Castle, the bricks for Wallingford Castle were made here so as we leave the brick kiln in the residential road come towards the village centre so the main road is just here it's quite pleasant up here even on a drizzly day like today it's all sort of autumn weather really but quite nice and atmospheric so that way looking towards Oxford and then that way about a quarter of a mile no sorry four miles down goes down to Henley it's quite nice there's a mosaic here on the bus shelter, Nettlebird. There's a couple of things around here I'd just like to quickly show you. There's these pudding stones, they're probably about 50 million years old. They're a bit like na natural concrete, all sort of stones all kind of mixed together and um, they're a bit of a mystery as to why they're here but they're possibly an old way of marking, you know, the roots. Um, possibly. The, the other place I know where there is some is another village, the Lee, in Buckinghamshire. So, go down here. There's not a huge amount in the town centre to show you. It's got a lot of sort of Georgian buildings. So we'll just have a quick look at the town centre and then I'm going to head down. We're going to go and find the village of Bix. Now Bix is a bit of an unusual place. There is another village called Bix, a couple of miles or so that way. But that's not the village of Bix we're going to see there was the village of Bix Bottom which is down it's almost like in a very sort of hidden valley um, you know I have been there about 10 years ago and it feels so sort of far away so we're going to walk down there and we're going to go and find the old ruined church of Bix so there you are I'll just let you have a look that is Nettlebed town centre I'm now going to go off for a walk down to Bix As you can see, I've now left the village of Nettlebed up into the woods. The name Nettlebed literally comes from that there were a lot of nettles, lots of stinging nettles. There's no sort of, you know, nothing else. That's what it is. Lots of, there were lots of stinging nettles, but it doesn't seem to be much of a problem for me on today's walk. As I said, back at the brick kiln, there used to be a railway line. I don't know much about it, whether it, you know, what gauge it was. I assume it probably didn't even have any locomotives, but it might have done. If you know better, do tell me. I imagine it's probably just a horse-drawn, you know, horse-drawn, maybe even just uh, men pushed them wagons along, but they come out this way. Must have been a fairly steep gradient, but as we come down to here, into the woods, you can see this must be where they would have dug the clay. The, the soil feels like it's got a lot of clay in it, and you've only got to have a look. Let me just go past these oak trees here. You can see how um, they've really been digging a lot in the past. See how undulating the land is in quite an unnatural way. So, tripping over. Uh, so this, this is the, this will be the old clay pits where they dug the clay from to make the bricks. So what I'm going to do now is continue down through these woods, oak trees there, and that's all beech trees, very pleasant woodland. And we go down towards the old, the lost, well it's not a lost valley but it feels a bit like that. You'll see what I mean when we get down there to where the old village of Bix used to be.
I'm now down in the valley. It's very nice and peaceful here. You can't hear much other than my footsteps. If I just stand still, all I can hear is like the birds singing. I can just hear an aeroplane. But other than that, just the natural sounds. Probably the sort of place you could expect to see deer and that. I've seen, you know, a few squirrels running around. It's a very, just a very pleasant path down here. And um, yeah, it's just a very relaxing, peaceful walk. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to continue on down towards, we'll eventually come to what's known as the Warburg Nature Reserve. When we get to the Warburg Nature Reserve, I believe there's a visitor centre and that we'll have a look there and that's another alternative place you could park if you wanted to do this walk. And then we're going to continue on following the valley once we get away from the, um, the wooded part of the valley. It, it becomes more fields again and we'll eventually end up at the... Um, old church at Bix. I mean, also it does at the moment, it feels a bit like walking along an old railway. It might look like I'm walking along an old railway, but I can assure you there's never been a railway here. I know there were, I mentioned there was once one up at um, Nettlebed, but this is not an old railway. It's just a nice peaceful path through the valley. And I'm going to continue on now. I've now walked on past the Warburg Nature Reserve where there is a car park. As you can see, the road has now become a tarmac road. So if you wanted to drive here, you can park up there, but it's a very quiet road. I've been walking along this road for three quarters of a mile now, and I've not seen a single car. There were one or two cars in the car park. And as we get to here, it's behind these oak trees. This is the exciting bit of the walk. This is what I've been walking towards all this time since we started up at Nettlebed. This is where the old church is. So this is a very, very ancient road. Um, you know, people for years and years, you know, really going back a long time, I've been walking or taking horse and carts along this road, but now you can only actually get a vehicle to the car park for the Warburg Nature Reserve. So there have been, there still are a few houses about, but the actual Bix village moved up the hill near to Nettlebed, about a mile towards Henley. But the old church is, we'll just go through here, and here it is in front of us there. This is the old church at Bix, so it's a ruin now. Um, there is another church at Bix at the new village, which is a Victorian church, but we can have a look at a few things. It's still got quite a lot of character despite being a ruin. It's obviously had some restoration work. Look at that, the um, herringbone flint work. You quite often see herringbone brickwork on buildings, but it's quite impressive to see herringbone flint work. Flint work. It's called herringbone because it's literally like a herringbone, laid one way, laid the other way. So that zigzag pattern is repeated, so it's a bit like, you know, the bones of a herring. Now, let's have a look. There's, um, there's a gothic window there, that one's been bricked up. But despite not having a roof, you know, it's fairly obvious it's a church. What's quite interesting, before we go inside, if you have a look here, see these big buttresses now? These were added in the 1700s because there was some concern of the churches, you know, wasn't in the best of states so these two buttresses were added to stop the tower from collapsing and um, they obviously helped you know prolong its deterioration but then what happened was although they obviously did their job because they're still here but the tower isn't by 1874 it was decided you know with the dwindling congregation the village had sort of all moved on that the church should be closed the roof was unsafe and um, you know they were worried it could potentially the roof could push down and cause it to collapse, cause the wall to collapse. So the roof was taken off, and this is what we're left with. But you know it's now it's obviously had some work, it has had restoration work on it, and it's looked after, so it survives as a ruined church. Interesting, there's a bit of a, a hill here, so that's probably where a lot of the masonry from the collapsed tower is buried. Look here. Look up the nave, we'll go through into the chancel, and you see this wall, well not wall, but this arch here, this stonework has clearly been replaced. And then that, that was that. What well, outside was a very, very narrow bricked up window, it's quite wide, so I suppose it was one of those windows, you quite often see them in churches, slanting. So it kind of opens out so the light can, can shine in, but on the outside. So it basically uses less glass, but more light can come in. 
There's the main window. Well, actually, I'm standing there explaining it. That's probably what it would look like, that one. That hasn't been bricked up, so you can see what I mean. Small window, but it lets, would let the light in, because obviously now all the light comes from the sky, because there's no roof, would have let the light in. So, yeah, it would have been a bigger one of that. It's very small, though, I mean, this, this chancel area. So it would have been, you know, a, a very small church. We are talking, you know, for probably only about 50 or 60 people would have been regulars here. More herringbone flint work there. Let's go out here. Um, go out whether there would have been another door. There might have been a little porch as well, possibly on that door. That door there. Not entirely sure, but that would have been wooden rotted away. Come out to here. There's the remains of the other buttress. See this side of the church. I think now it's going to be time for me to continue on my walk back up to Nettle Bed. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been a very interesting walk. And it's been so quiet. Okay, yes, it's a, an autumn day. It's a very mild autumn day. But, you know, you can see it's autumn by the leaves on the trees. But they're just, I've seen hardly any people. I've passed like two people on this walk the whole time. So for me, it's been a really pleasant, very relaxing quiet walk i've really enjoyed it so you know if you do want to come and do this walk then like i say you could either park up at nettle bed and walk down here or if you wanted to see the warburg nature reserve have a look at this church there is a car park up there just don't all come on the same day because we want to keep it nice and quiet I'm now on my way home. I just thought I'd stop at the new village of Bix to see what there is to see here because I understand some parts of the old church are in the new church. So that is the new church for Bix, also called St James. The ruined church we saw down in the valley, that was St James's church of Bix. So it's not a very big place, the new village. The main road which we started at is just over there. That's the old school. We're going to go through here, and here is the new church. So, little Victorian church, got quite a long building, and um, I understand there's some windows and the old font from the church inside. So, let's just go in and have a look. So, there we go, nice to find it's open. So, this is the new church. Interestingly, it was flint on the outside, brick on the inside. That's the font, but that is the font from the old church, which we've just been to. And then if we have a look in here, walking down the nave, I do really like this brickwork, the varied colours of the brickwork. I think that's really quite cool. Um, yeah, through here, so I want to show you. Here, there's a stained glass window. This one, okay, the camera's not picking it out. Right, what I'm going to do, I'll um, take a picture of this one and insert it into the video now. And then, there's one more. Um, there's this one. They came out of the old church, but they were originally in a monastery in France. They made their way over to Oxfordshire, got put in the old church, and now they're here in a new church. So they've been two, three different churches in their life, which I think is quite nice. So yeah, this is inside the church, the new church of Bix. What I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to go down probably to Marlow, Henley, have a wander around there, but that's not part of the video. Um, I'm just going to go outside the church, we'll have a look at the common, and that'll probably conclude this video of um, the old and the new villages of Bix. We've come from the lost village, up to this village. So come out here, to the churchyard, let's go. We'll go out out here onto the common. So it's a very pleasant place. So like I said, um so yeah I will point out I didn't walk from old Bix to New Bix. You probably could if you wanted to, but um this was all I, I drove up here rather than include that in part of the walk. But I did a nice four mile walk from Nettle Bed, four and a half mile walk. And I just thought I'd come here. But this maybe another day. 
could come for a walk here. Look, there's footpath signs everywhere. So, from the new village of Bix, outside the new St. James Church, even though it's not actually that new, but you know what I mean. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.